you guys ready to go on an adventure? Uh, I, I can't hear you guys. I got oh, you're saying yes. Okay, well, first, we have to get into our little kid minds, but also, we have to be ready and believe that we are going to travel. We're going to travel back to the 1600s. Are you guys ready? Okay, well, I have my magical transporting hula hoop. Let's hope you guys have your magical transporting stuff, too. You guys all have to believe, otherwise it's not going to happen. All right, you guys ready? Ah, uh, did you guys all believe? Because I, I don't know, it's not really happening. You guys didn't? Oh my gosh, it's not going to happen if you don't believe. I'm disappointed in you guys. Whatever. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Well, I'm gonna teach you guys about Shakespeare. You're gonna be very surprised. I spent a lot of money to get him here. So, without any further ado, here you go. It's Shakespeare. It's Shakespeare! Oh my gosh! You look a little different um uh time hasn't been kind to me oh okay well are you guys ready to hear about me i am ready are you guys ready all right just so you know you're gonna hear shakespeare's biggest fan running all around because she's just so crazily happy about shakespeare so Shakespeare was born, we believe, on April 23rd, 1564, in Stratford-upon-Avon, United Kingdom. So the reason why we think it's that day is because back then, often people, when they had kids, they would have to get them baptized right away so they would get into heaven. Because a lot of times, the kids wouldn't make it much longer because it was just really hard to live back then. So, we believe it was the 23rd because his baptism was on the 26th. He died on April 23rd, 1616, in the same place. Look it, it's our biggest fan. This is Remy. She is the biggest fan of Shakespeare. Back in Shakespeare's time, a lot of people just didn't know how to read. They didn't have the accessibility that we do nowadays. So when plays would go up, they'd often be new, so people wouldn't know what they're going to see. So when Shakespeare would put out shows, there would be these flags that symbolize the kind of story that is going to be told. There are three types of Shakespeare plays. Comedies. Tragedies. Histories. Do you know that people think that I was not really a person? Isn't that crazy? Of course I am a real person. Of course. So, what makes Shakespeare so big and great? This is what we all are probably wondering right now. He sounds old. Oh, something really awesome that Shakespeare wrote in, and he didn't create this, it was actually credited to Christopher Marlowe and some other people, but the thing is Shakespeare kind of like made it his own. This is called iambic pentameter. So what is that? That sounds like a log word that I don't understand. You guys remember syllables, right? Like Miranda, that's three. Shakespeare, two. Remy. That's two. Shall I compare the two a summer's day? Do you see how it's in syllables? Also, did you know that Shakespeare created words? He created over 1,700 words that some of them we use today. The words that he created was the word bandit and dwindle and lonely. He created the word lonely. Right, Remy. You know that he created the word elbow as a verb? This thing, but like, ow! You guys ready? I'm gonna tell the story of Romeo and Juliet as fast as I can. 
Claude, who has something about two star-crossed lovers. Romeo is in love with someone. Everyone's really mad, so he starts to fight with all the Capulets. Bah, 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 bah. Someone dies. Oh, no. So, Romeo is like, I need something happy to do. So he sneaks into a party, and he falls in love with this girl. Oh, this girl's so beautiful, but he doesn't know that she is a Capulet. When they find out, oh, Romeo, Romeo, if all the Romeo, Juliet is the son. So, they make a plan to run away with each other because they are star-crossed lovers. So, <laughs> Juliet goes to the friar and she's like, we need a plan. And the friar's like, here, here's this big poison, take it and people think you're dead. But, it's up to know does it get Romeo. So, Romeo sees Juliet dead and he's like, oh my love, I cannot survive without her. And then he drinks actual poison and then Juliet wakes up and she's like, oh my love, he's, he's dead. So, she takes his knife and straps herself. To live with her husband in love for eternity. And then people realize maybe we shouldn't hate each other. And that is Romeo and Juliet. Thank you. So much, Shakespeare, for coming. You're welcome. Thanks. You guys ready to hit back to reality? Bye, guys.